In this video, we are going to address geometry and similarity right triangle standard number four. One part of it involves proving the Pythagorean theorem using similarity. I'd like to start by letting you know kind of the basic outline behind it. Remember we discussed earlier that we will have upcoming homework that starts by giving us a picture with a right triangle. And then we will draw in an altitude, creating more right triangles. This picture serves as the basis behind our proof for the Pythagorean theorem. In particular, we will see that this circle or this triangle here in the red is similar to the overall big yellow triangle. Because it is similar, we will create proportions based on that. We will also have this even smaller one, similar to the overall big triangle in the yellow, and we will create proportions from that. After creating two sets of proportions, we'll be able to combine those results and create the Pythagorean theorem. That's kind of the idea outline behind this proof, and so we are starting off here. For people watching the video at home, pause the video, write down the problem, and also write down step number one, which I have listed, basically giving us all the given. We'll note in this instance, we have our right triangle, ABC. The legs are A and B. The hypotenuse is length C. The right triangle here is angle C. And so the first thing we are going to do is to create that picture I just mentioned by drawing the altitude. And in order to draw that altitude, we will have to connect with a 90 degree angle from point C to the opposite side. Setting it up, this looks about like our 90. And so we have created, from that altitude, two more 90 degree angles. Now, we will need a way of referencing all of these. And so, we need to have a name for this point. Sure, let's call it point D or capital D. You will notice then that takes the hypotenuse AB and it chops it up into pieces. We have this piece here and that piece there. AB is equal to BD plus DA. We will also want to use letters to represent these in the problem. So let's call this one lowercase d, and we'll call this one lowercase e. So we draw the altitude CD, which gives us BD, we are calling D, and DA, we're calling E. One observation I want to make, because it will be important for us way at the end of the proof, please observe that the overall hypotenuse length of C based on the segment addition postulate, that is equal to those two pieces added together. We will use that at the very, very end. Well, our first step now is to explain why is this triangle outlined in the red similar to the overall big triangle. And Josh, you just said it's because of angle-angle similarity. You're correct. What are the details, though? 
if we're going to use angle-angle similarity, we need to say what two pairs of angles are congruent. Well, the first one's fairly straightforward. A 90-degree angle is going to be congruent to a 90-degree angle. We'll put that one down first. Angle B, D, C, the 90-degree angle in the red triangle, is congruent to angle A, C, B in the overall big triangle. And we know that's true because they're both right angles, giving us our first pair of congruent angles. We, of course, need a second pair of congruent angles now. Well, I'd like to make this observation. This angle B is, of course, an angle in the red triangle. It's also in the overall... Wait, I don't want blue. I wanted yellow. Give me yellow here. It's also in the overall big triangle. That's a shared angle. As a shared angle, we know that they're going to be congruent. So we can now put that piece down and say angle DBC is congruent to angle ABC because it's a shared angle. More formally, we know that we would consider that like the reflexive property of congruence. Well, because we have those two pieces, we can now say triangle DBC, and we'll want to make certain that we get these pieces matched up. All right, so we're going to start with angle B. We said angle B is congruent to angle B. And then we can take the 90 degree angle, which is angle D in the red triangle. And that's angle C in the overall big triangle. Shared angle matches shared angle for position one. 90 matches 90 for position 2. And then, of course, position 3 is forced in on us. This is BDC matching BCA. And we get that based on angle-angle similarity. At this stage, we are now going to create the proportion. To create the proportion, we're going to take hypotenuse matching hypotenuse, leg matching leg. And so we will start now with hypotenuse matching hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse length for the overall big triangle? AB is the hypotenuse for the big triangle, and that has length C. That's our hypotenuse. For the smaller triangle in the red, what's the hypotenuse? It's not D. Remember, the hypotenuse has to be opposite from the 90 degree angle. So this length of A is the hypotenuse for the smaller angle. We will put those two things together and say, Hypotenuse matches hypotenuse. That's our scale factor. We will also create the scale factor with leg matching leg. One of the pieces you should be careful about, how you match them up. Take a look at the legs and consider. We have a shorter leg and we have a longer leg in this particular drawing. 
this length here in the overall big triangle is the longer leg. Well, I'm going to label this as the long leg then, which means this is my shorter leg. In the red, which is the shorter leg? It's the altitude itself. That's the short leg, which means this piece, D, is the long leg. Well, we want to make certain that we have the correct legs matching each other up. So let's create our proportion. We've already done it. Hypotenuse matching hypotenuse. And now we're going to match them up long leg with long leg. What's the long leg in the yellow? Long leg in the yellow is right here, BC, which is the letter A. And the long leg in the red is right here for D. So we will put those two things together and have long leg matching long leg. Remember, our ability to create this proportion, seeing that the scale factors are equal, comes from the definition of similar triangles. After we have created proportions, what did we always do with them? So we'll do that exactly. Then we can cross multiply the same as strategy as we've always done. And after cross multiplying, what do we get? A times A is A squared. C times D will, of course, be just CD. So that cross multiplying gives us A squared equals CD. All of these steps, three through seven, were designed to create this one portion of A squared. What we will wind up doing later on in the proof the whole purpose of this was to create a squared because later we're going to come up here and take a squared and we will replace it with c d something that is the same well this process we just did we need to do it again we have all these steps three through seven and we need to do them over with the, with the third triangle. We saw that the yellow was similar to the red. For the same reasons, the yellow is also going to be similar to the purple. And so one thing we can do is rewrite those same five steps. We still see, in this instance, that the 90 degree angle is going to be congruent to the 90 degree angle. Repeating our step number three. A shared angle, this time it's angle A. A shared angle is going to be congruent. So for the exact same reasons, we will create angle-angle similarity, giving us the similar triangles. We will once again go through and create the proportion, hypotenuse matching hypotenuse, leg matching leg. And then we will once again cross multiply to give us some algebra. Well, if we're going to repeat the exact same five steps with different letters, we know that we don't have to actually write them all down. We've got this cool shortcut that says similarly, to steps three through seven for the same reasons we just have to write up our results now because it's the same ideas just with different letters so let's create our similar triangles 
triangle, something is similar to triangle. And I've got to go up here earlier. I wrote down congruent earlier and they're not. In step five, they're similar. I don't know why I wrote the congruency symbol. I wish somebody had caught that right away. Okay, so let's start with our shared angle. What's the shared angle? It's A. So we will say A matches up with A because those are congruent. Now we can match the 90s. What are the two 90 degree angles? What letters do we use for them? D and C. 90 matches 90. And then we'll use the third letter. What's the third letter for the purple triangle? Not B, for the purple triangle. That's point C. And for the yellow triangle, that's point B. So they are similar, which will allow us to create the proportion, hypotenuse matching hypotenuse. What's the hypotenuse of the purple triangle? And we've already said that the hypotenuse of the yellow triangle is C. So hypotenuse matching hypotenuse is going to equal leg matching leg. Well, what is, in this instance, what is the short leg? Because so far, we have not used this variable E yet. We'll note that E is the short leg of the purple triangle. So we will have to match it with the short leg of the yellow triangle. Hypotenuse matches hypotenuse. Short matches short. Well, how long is the short leg of the yellow triangle? It's right here. That's B. So, setting up the proportion, hypotenuse matching hypotenuse, short leg matching short leg, we have B over E. By cross multiplying, what would we obtain? B squared equals C times E. And that finishes off the second piece of similarity. To finish the problem, we now have to actually consider the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says leg squared plus leg squared, a squared plus b squared is equal to, well, we have to show that it's equal to c squared. This is where we are going to use some substitution. In step number seven and step number eight, we created things that are the same as a squared and b squared. So we will replace a squared with the thing that's the same. a squared will get replaced with c times d. b squared is the same as c times e. So we will replace b squared with c times e. Let's take a look at this then. What could we do with the algebra on the right hand side? You notice how they both have the c? We could use the distributive property to pull out the C. If 
if we factored out the C, what would get left behind? D and E, so we leave behind D plus E. But this is where we will go all the way back up to the beginning. Remember how I said at the very, very end of the proof there was a fact that we needed to use? What is D plus E the same as? So we'll replace it, absolutely. Since D plus E is the same as C, we can make that substitution saying A squared plus B squared equals C times C. And finally, we can rewrite C times C as C squared. And that's nothing more than the definition of exponents. Repeated multiplication. I would like to caution you about this proof. I'd like to caution you about this idea. And I will emphasize this again further in class. Many students make the mistake of thinking the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Largely because we have chosen to use the letters a, b, and c to represent the two legs and the hypotenuse, respectively. There is nothing special about the letters a, b, and c. If I wanted to, and if you wanted to, we could go through and replace every single one of these things with something else. If we wanted to, we can say C is now going to be smiley face. And go through and change every last occurrence of C to smiley face. And we don't have C represented as hypotenuse. We have smiley face means hypotenuse. Please do not memorize the Pythagorean theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A lot of math teachers use those letters just to try to make it simpler, but that causes mistakes. You should understand that the Pythagorean theorem actually represents leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. It's not the letters that we care about. It's what the letters represent. A and B represent the legs, C represents the hypotenuse, and we will see in future videos and future classwork the dangers of memorizing A squared plus B squared equals C squared and the kinds of mistakes it can cause you to make.